Enjoy the convenience of seven days a week banking and extended hours with Cube from First Arkansas Bank and Trust, member FDIC. It's time for From the Short Grass with Trey Shap, a golf podcast for those who love golf, struggle with golf, and just like to enjoy the outdoors and fellowship with friends, all while chasing a ball around trying to put it in a four and a quarter inch diameter hole. From the Short Grass is brought to you by Blackman Auctions. For over 80 years, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. By MinnowsPlus.com. From baits to waiters, if it helps you catch a fish, they have it. And now, from the short grass, here is your host, Trey Shap. Welcome to another edition of From the Short Grass. I am Trey Shap. My apologies to you, the listeners out there of this podcast. I really appreciate you. But I totally neglected to recap the women's Olympic golf results on our last episode. And it was a good week for the United States. Nellie Corda wins gold with a 17 under par performance, finishing one shot ahead of Moni Anami and Lydia Ko, who tied for silver with 16 under par scores. So, how about this? Team USA gets the gold in both the women's and men's golf for the first time in history. Congratulations to James Pyatt of Canton, Michigan. 22-year-old Michigan State golfer rallied from a three-hole deficit with the help of three birdies over the final eight holes to win the 121st U.S. Amateur Championship at Oakmont Country Club with a 2 and one victory over Austin Greaser. Pyatt received the gold medal and custody of the Havemeyer Trophy for one year, a 10-year exemption into the U.S. Amateur Championship, and an exemption into the 2022 U.S. Open at the Country Club in Brookline, Massachusetts, as well as an exemption into the 2022 Open Championship at St. Andrews and a likely invitation into the 2022 Masters Tournament. The runner-up received a silver medal and three-year exemption into the U.S. Amateur Championship, also exemptions into the 2022 U.S. Open and a likely invitation into the 2022 Masters Tournament. I know football season will be here before you know it, and last week I traveled to Fayetteville to sit down with a graduate senior linebacker for the Arkansas Razorbacks. This man was voted to the second team All-SEC defense by the media at this year's SEC Football Media Days in Hoover, Alabama. You will enjoy my conversation with Grant Morgan coming up. But first, I need to tell you about Blackman Auctions and the August Arkansas Contractors Auction that is coming up on August the 25th. It starts at 8 a.m., and you can find out more info about it at blackmanauctions.com. Since 1938, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. When we come back, Grant Morgan will be on the tee. Minnows Plus is your local source for live bait and live well supplies. They carry the entire line of SureLife products, everything from better bait and finer shiner to no ammonia products to keep your bait and your catch thriving till you get back to the dock. They are the best source for all your private land ponds. Minnows Plus has fish food and pond fertilizer to keep your pond healthy and thriving all year long. If you own or run a bait and tackle shop and need to resupply, contact Minnows Plus and ask about their wholesale prices. Open to the public and walk-ins are welcome. Find them on the web at minnowsplus.com. This is Thomas Blackman of Blackman Auctions. Trey asked me to sponsor his show for another few months. Even though I don't like golf, I do like his show. I have no idea how he gets the awesome variety of guests on his show, but it is entertaining and informative even for a horrible golfer like myself. I'm learning a lot about the game and about the passion for playing. So much so, I've started using my country club for more than Sunday brunch. Trey makes golf interesting. I make auctions interesting. For auctions, listen to me. For golf, listen to Trey. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. Welcome back to From the Short Grass. On the tee from Greenwood, Arkansas, linebacker for the Arkansas Razorbacks, Grant Morgan. Grant Morgan, thanks for sitting down with us uh, on From the Short Grass. And uh, I hear you like to play a little golf. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. Golfing is definitely my fun sport in my life. I, uh, football's fun, don't get me wrong, but golf gets my mind away from everything, lets me go out there, hang out with guys, and be able to just enjoy it, like the weather, and just do everything for fun. All right, we'll talk golf in a second, but I, I have to talk a little football with you. I mean, obviously, coming back for another year here on the Hill in Fable. Why come back? Yeah, why not, though? 
why not come back? I have another opportunity to prove myself, be able to climb up in the draft boards, but to get to play for Sam Pittman's different. I get the guy for an extra year, but you don't get the guy for an extra senior year. He's a once in a lifetime coach, I'm telling you. He, the way he coaches, the way he treats us, the way he respects us as players, and the way he respects us as men, I wouldn't want to play for anybody else for my extra year. The way he kind of pushes everything, the way we can win this year, and the way we can handle our business, and the way what he does for us off the field, that's why. There's no, there's no reason not to. Let's go back to his first year last year. Obviously, with COVID and everything, not having a spring practice with him, I know that had to have been difficult. The way the fall camp was set up had to have been difficult. But when you guys came in the locker room that first game against Georgia and you're leading Georgia, did you guys feel it then that this is different than what we've been through the last several years? Yeah, I definitely think that didn't instill any more confidence in us. And I think the reason why we were leading at that halftime is the way Pittman talks about Arkansas football. The day he got the job and was announced to us, he talked about our standards are just as high as everyone else's. So when we ever go into a game or whenever we went into practice and stuff, like we decided like this is our year no matter what happens. Like we ended up only winning three games last year. We thought that was our year. This was our year because of the way our confidence level is with Coach Pittman, the way he wants to be here, the way he wants to be an Arkansas Razorback. But that alone, that game sparked for the future too. Like we, they were a top five team pretty much the whole year. Like they, they deserve it too we decided we could play defense that game no matter what because we had Barry Odom as our DC the way he led us into that game like we didn't think oh we got to just hold him to 20 points and we'll win we thought we can win this game no matter what that game led to another that game led to another and it just it really did spark our confidence too how tough was it last year when you guys were getting ready to head to Houston the Texas Bowl take on TCU and then all of a sudden that game just gets canceled because of COVID. It was really tough, um, especially me. Like, I didn't know I was coming back at that time. Um, I thought that was going to be my last game. I didn't get to play against Bama last year because of my knee injury. I thought this was going to be my last hoorah with all my guys. I thought it was going to be a fun little time to go down there to the Texas Bulls. So whenever we decided or whenever we found out, we were literally in the team room all in our suits going under the bus. Every single person was able to play. Every single, We were all ready to go. Um, and when we got the call, Pittman brought us in. He said emergency team meeting. Or they sent out a thing, emergency team meeting right now. So we went to the team meeting room, and we literally, we were like, something's wrong. Something, something bad had to happen. Like, and obviously, it's a COVID year, so anytime you get in a weird message, you think something bad happened. We got that little message. We sat in there, and Pittman said, like, he was almost, he was really shook because he felt so bad for us. Like, when you think of John Marshall or Felipe Franks, like, the guys who deserved that last year who did leave, like, they deserved the last game. It literally, it broke us all down. It literally, it's like someone just pushing you onto your knees, and you're just sitting there, and you got to take it. So whenever you sit there, and you're like, that wasn't my last game. I, I'm no longer a Razorback. So we focused on us. We brought all that energy into the offseason, and... Here we are now, ready to play some football. What can Razorback fans expect this year from these Hogs? They can expect a well-tuned team, a confident team. They play together. I'll tell you that right now. Um, in the past, you might have seen a lot of players pointing fingers. Uh, this year, no one's going to be pointing fingers except unless it's to themselves. We're going to be smash mouth. We're going to be physical. That's the way we want to be. We want to play really hard. Guys picking up their teammates. Um, guys celebrating. We're going to celebrate. Everyone says, oh, you need to watch how you celebrate. No, like we're not an emotional team. We're an energetic team. So when we go, we're going to celebrate with each other. We're going to celebrate because we made a good play because you deserve to celebrate. It's a fun game, but we're going to do it by the rules. You talked about Sam Pittman a little earlier. What does he mean to Grant Morgan? Coach Pittman means exactly why I came back to Arkansas. He means the father figure I needed in football that is here with me every single day because my actual father can't be here. He's the guy who I look for when I need something or I have a question and I need an answer. He's also the guy who pushes me probably harder than anybody as well because he knows how good I can be. But it's not just a fake push. It's a, I have so much confidence in you that I, I trust you with this. He means enough for me to me to come back. I'll say that. Um, I would not have come back if Coach Pittman was here. Growing up in Greenwood, did you play any other sports besides football? I played baseball, and I played basketball. And then obviously I was in golf all growing up. I, my dad put us through golf lessons and tennis lessons growing up real early. Vash grass in Greenwood. What is that course like? I'll tell you right now. If you can drive a ball 325 yards, it doesn't matter. It does not matter at all. They're long par fives, but – you got to be able to hit it straight. There's trees lining every tee box. It means a lot to me because it's my home course. It's where we grew up. All my buddies, we'd always go and get some golf carts. We were so excited to go out there on weekends when we didn't have football and go play some golf. And I actually was talking to Connor Nolan the other day. He was out there. He was talking about how he can beat me now in golf. And it's not going to happen, obviously, ever because he can't. 
Uh, <laughs> so, but, wait, I sense a little trash talk. I mean, oh, yeah. You're not even on the course yet, and you're talking back oh, and forth that's, about it. Oh, that's how we are. He sent me a picture of him and his grandpa playing. He said, Grant, I'm waiting for you. So he can wait all his life. He's not going to ever beat me. Where do you play up here in Fayetteville? We play at Stonebridge. Connor plays at Pinnacle. He has a membership there. Jack Lindsay, when Jack Lindsay's with us, uh, we play a lot with him um, at Paradise Valley. Um, the Lynx courses are fun. Um, Have you talked to Coach Brad McMakin, the golf coach, about, hey, can we get a football outing at the Blessings? I have not. I have not. I need to reach out to him and see if we can do something like that. I understand, and I got this from, from David White, John David's father, who, by the way, played golf here at Arkansas, that John David is one of the ringleaders of getting a group of guys together off the football team. Who all is involved in that? It's kind of funny. We kind of have like a rival golf gangs in our football group. So we have like my group or our group, me, Bumper Pool, John Stephen Jones, Hayden Henry, Jake Yurchek, um, and and like Jackson Woodard, he's with us. And then you got JD White's group who he gets all together. It's like him, Zach Zymus, Kendall Catalan, um, some of the linemen, um, like Brady Latham, uh, tight end Nathan Johnson, people just like that are going with them and we kind of have this animosity towards each other like who's better at golf whose group was be, would be whose group so jd white came and played over with us one day we never played with them he's always like i'm the best one of our group we'll play with y'all and he said he we played only nine holes and i think me bumper and him all tied i eagled hole eight on Stonebridge to tie it back up and we went the last nine or the front nine and we tied we we're like, J.D., like, there's no way you're that good because we played really – we shot, I think, one over and through front nine, like, good for us. And J.D. was like, actually, that's probably my best round of golf I've ever played. And we were like, oh, okay, so you're really not as good as – you're like – and he's joking about it. He goes, no, I'm good, I promise. But uh, he's, he's a good golfer. Their group, though, is probably a little less than he is. But it's, it was fun. It's kind of like – it's fun little gang wars, I guess you could say. Who's the best golfer on the team? Me, confidently, I would say me and Bumper switch back and forth every single day. Like, whenever we play, like, I beat him. We focus so much on just our own balls. We don't do a lot of, like, like J.D. White and them do, like, scrambles. They do a lot, bunch of, like, two-man scrambles and kind of play against each other. Um, our group, like, me and Bumper, we play solo every single time. So you like to play your own ball? Yeah, for sure. I don't, I'm not a big scramble guy. I want to, if I want to know how good I want to get and, like, good out, I think the best way to do it is go hit your own ball. Like, you don't try to rely on anybody else because that's the way golf was made right like you go to course you go to tournaments and you play your own ball so have you played in any tournaments i have I, I played a ton growing up um every weekend we had a tournament in the summer we were going to um here recently probably not as much as because i've been focused so much on football but me and bumper we went into a couple four-man scrambles summer before covid so 2019 i think we got like second one of them it was actually pretty cool we do a bunch of like we get like 15 people together, and then we all go play, and we get like five tee times. Obviously, you are a strong athlete, so I imagine you hit the ball pretty far. Yeah. Do you uh, know where it's going when you hit it yeah, pretty far? Yeah, that's someone on the golf team named Julian Perica. I don't know if you heard of him. Yep, Julian. <laughs> yep, he's yeah, good. So uh, he golfs with us quite a bit. Like He's always fun, comes out there, teaches us stuff. He's like, Grant, quit trying to crush the ball so much and just – easier swing down and so we're he works with me so much like trying to pin my elbow to my hip and like that's just so when he finally slowed me down and tried not to hit 398 yards every single time I would just find fairways and slowly I felt my swing over the summer and felt it and it went straighter and straighter I, I play the little baby fade um but that's just pretty much on my drive everything else honestly my low irons are where it gets kind of tricky the three four five is where I get to where like I'm like okay I can I I fade it a little bit more than I should, um, but here recently, it's been I hit like a seven iron I hit it around two hundred yards like I'm trying to crush it all my high irons that I know I can hit good, uh, yeah I, I could say we me and Bumper are probably the guys you bring for a long driving distance competition. So it seems like you and Bumper y'all have competitions all over the place. You're playing pool up here in between meetings and stuff and you're competitive on the golf course obviously you're competitive on the football field as well yeah. you guys just y'all go at it don't you yes we literally anything and everything we are competing with each other and i don't know if that's more just me or if that's he may not think it's competitive at all but i'm trying to beat him and everything um he hates getting beat um he's very competitive um too but I probably take it to the next level every single time just because I hate losing so much. Um, but yeah, we we're uh, 
we're constantly in battles and we're good at a lot of things. So like we have to be able to kind of push each other in those things. So it's fun. What is the strength of your game? Uh, my my strength is around the greens, uh, my chipping, um, I, my feel for my club. So I don't carry – I carry a 56 on my sand wedge. So that's where I've had that club for probably six, seven years. And the way I do that is I kind of just – it's all feel. I open the club face up if I have to and just know exactly where to go with it. Um, I don't do a bunch of bump and runs like with the eight iron or something like that. I I kind of just stick with my sand wedge. And um, I bump and run it with that, but it's not as much of a – let it roll out kind of a thing um but really from about 30 in is where i kind of lock in and say listen you can you can fly kind on this like yeah. you can you can go at it and so that's like that's a good feeling for me and that's also probably because i've been playing a ton throughout the early summer and stuff when we got a break right do you see yourself after your football career is over playing golf more often oh for sure um i think that's one thing that I will do for the rest of my life. I think is whenever I can walk and stand and still hold a club and swing it is when I'll be doing it. So whenever I can't do that is when I'll stop. Yeah, that, obviously football is not a, not a game that you can play your entire life, but golf yeah. is. And yeah. since you learned at an early age, who were some of the guys that you looked to maybe pattern your swing after or watch when they were on TV? Obviously, I watched Tiger no matter what because that's just what my dad instilled in me. And then we watched, and then to see him win the Masters on his little comeback, it was awesome. Like, I watched every single hole. I was supposed to be in my classes, and I'm sitting there on my computer watching it. Um, but the guys, I'll tell you right now, my friends call me John Rom. Um, they call me because I have a short, short backswing because one of the things Julian taught me, which he doesn't swing like him at all, but – he taught me, like, Grant, just slow everything down. So I thought maybe slowing it down was, like, not bringing it back as far. Because I used to have a John Daly swing, like, super far behind me. I had, like, a baseball. So I just slowed it down and went about a quarter swing every time and just kind of powered it through. And so that's what I do now. Uh, John Rom, Tony Finau, both those short uh, back swings. But they're so powerful in the, their hips and so powerful with their hands going over through. So uh, that's that's kind of who I watch. Those are probably my top two that I watch. I could see the John Rom. I mean, you're not as tall as John Rom, but I mean, you fill out yeah. the pants and the shirt like a John Rom does. Yeah, for sure. And that's that's kind of how I've, I probably have a temper just like him too. I'd probably get just as mad. He's way better, and he's actually the one he won just recently. He was like, I, the reason why I won is because I didn't get temper with it. So yeah, the U.S. Open. What did you think about him winning at Torrey Pines? So when we watched that, it was me. We we do like a draft, the draft thing, like with where everyone picks everyone, and I picked. Uh, I had him obviously. I would pick him every single time, and I don't I don't remember how it happened, but the last hole he had to he had to go birdie birdie to put him up, and so when that last hole, I was sitting there going, "All right, he's gonna birdie this. I already know he's gonna birdie it." And when he birdies it, we're me and I think I don't remember who it was. It was Bumper or Jack. We were going crazy about it. We were just like, that. "He's winning it. He just won the thing right there." Yeah. So it was really cool. When you get out on the course, is there a score you're trying to shoot? What's your best round? And then do you try to shoot to that every time? Obviously, besides yeah. par on the on a course. Yeah. Um, I I try to I try to for sure hit 70s. Like, I try to say, oh, listen, you can hit 70s. Like, that'll be a really good round, hit 70s. Um, my average or what I – like, my handicap, oh, we kept a little score, and we had to – we do our – like, we have this, all these apps that, like, did our handicaps, and we would just continue to put our scores in every time. Um, my best round ever is a 70 – I think it was a 73, and it was like I, – I personally probably shot a 70 – many 74 75s but my best like ever that I actually kept score was a 73 and it was at a my home it was in Fort Smith it was um Ben Garen been there um so and great I great public course oh, it is it really is a good course so they have three nines too yep. which is really cool yep. luckily it was on my favorite too so whenever we did it it was all the longer drives will help you um so I'm I'm trying to shoot in the 70s every time um I don't at all um but I shoot low 80s almost every single time. Low 80s, high 70s. Um, push for the mid 70s, low 70s. I know there can be trash talk on the football field. When you're out there with your teammates on the golf course, is there trash talk going on then as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of purses being thrown out. There's a lot of uh, Sally's, uh, Nancy's, you know, all the normal golf talk. But 
um, we get into each other's head pretty big, uh, especially whenever you get John, Steve, and me and Bump together, and we're all against each other. Like we always, we uh, we we try to get in each other's heads for sure. Does it work? Uh, yeah, we'll say Bumper. Uh, last time we were uh, at Stonebridge, it was really hot, like really sweaty, and we were John Stephen doesn't wear a glove, and we were like, all right, JS, this is gonna be a big glove day for you, buddy, and he was like, nope, don't need it, and literally. The next hole, we were like on hole five, and it was a par three, 205 yards, and Bumper goes to swing his six iron, and he loses his club on the downswing, loses his club. The club goes farther than the ball, and we're all crying laughing. JS walks straight back to his golf cart and grabs his glove because it's going to be a great day for a glove. So we always, and then the rest of the day, we said, Bump, don't let your club slip out of your hand, buddy. And so he couldn't play the rest of the day. He was like, I can't do it anymore. It was in his head. Oh my gosh! I, c- I could imagine. I mean, there there are times when some guys just can't take the club back; it gets yeah. in their head. I oh, mean, it's yeah. it's a game that can really mess it's, you up at times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one thing about it is, it is a mental game. That's why I love it so much because it literally is all in the head. Like you got to commit to your shot every single time. You got to visualize right before you're going to do it. So, like to sit there and be like, "All right, I'm going to hit the six iron over this ball, blah blah blah," and go from there. And like you got to sit there and be like. I'm actually going to do that. Like, it's not going to be like, what if I do this or something like that? With it being a mental game, does it help you in football? Yeah. Any? Yeah, I think it does. Um, I think the stuff that we do in the summer, like we're so strength-based, like in our workouts, like we're so strength-based, speed-based, and then whenever we go and play golf, like it really lets us lock in and really lets us kind of perfect our craft on like the mental side. Like we get to like relax and be have fun, but really at the same time we're being able to just – stay active we're being able to keep our mental like aptitude just going like we're not just sitting there being sitting on the couch like doing stuff i think that helps us a lot but um i wouldn't say it's helping me disguise the defense any differently but definitely is back to a football question then we'll be done the pads are coming on fall camp i mean it's it's hot it's time to get ready september 4th will be here before you know it yeah uh and i want it to be here really soon uh but right now um pads are coming on exactly like you said like we're we're excited and you can tell if you were to come out here to our practices and hear the excitement and not even in our voices just in the pads like we always say good teams you can hear them talk and communicate but like great teams you can hear the pads talk and communicate so um that's exactly what we've been doing we're having fun we're being physical and we're just we're loving that football's back and we're excited to get some fans in the stadium so they can see it too grant thanks for joining me on from the short grass and uh, best of luck this year I want to tell you about our friends at MinnowsPlus.com. Minnows Plus, an authorized frog togs outerwear dealer. Shop online at MinnowsPlus.com. You can get outfitted with the latest and best frog togs outerwear anywhere. MinnowsPlus.com. This is Thomas Blackman of Blackman Auctions. Trey asked me to sponsor a show for another few months. Even though I don't like golf, I do like his show. I have no idea how he gets the awesome variety of guests on his show, but it is entertaining and informative even for a horrible golfer like myself. I'm learning a lot about the game and about the passion for playing. So much so, I've started using my country club for more than Sunday brunch. Trey makes golf interesting. I make auctions interesting. For auctions, listen to me. For golf, listen to Trey. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. Minnows Plus is your local source for live bait and live well supplies. They carry the entire line of SureLife products, everything from better bait and finer shiner to no ammonia products to keep your bait and your catch thriving till you get back to the dock. They are the best source for all your private land ponds. Minnows Plus has fish food and pond fertilizer to keep your pond healthy and thriving all year long. If you own or run a bait and tackle shop and need to resupply, contact Minnows Plus and ask about their wholesale prices. Open to the public and walk-ins are welcome. Find them on the web at MinnowsPlus.com. On the tee with our weekly rules segment, it's PGA Master Professional, Adam Carney. Adam, used to, when you were taking a drop within the rules, whether it be a club length or two club lengths, you you could use any club in the bag. If you had a long putter, you could use it. If you had a short wedge, you could use that. Now the rules specifically state that you have to use the longest club in your bag that is not a putter. So typically, Mm -hmm. that's probably going to be the driver. Correct. And I think that change came about for a multitude of reasons one actually was one i was involved in um at the 07 pga championship um with vj Singh, and it started out with what vj considered to be an immovable obstruction which is something man-made that can't be moved 
And what it was is, you know, when we, we have crosswalks, obviously, sure. at these crosswalks, we have stand stanchions or posts that are holding these these ropes in place. The o, the O seven PGA Championship Southern Hills, Southern Hills in Oklahoma uh-huh. in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. In Tulsa, uh, Tiger Woods won that year. VJ definitely had interference from one of those stands that holds the ropes, and he wanted relief. I was not the only official there, but we both decided, no, this is a movable obstruction. He goes, well, it can't be moved. And I said, oh, yeah, watch this. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's just like pulling a pole out of the ground, right? You just start rocking it back and forth, and we pulled it out. Well, he subsequently then had interference from the crosswalk, which was an abnormal ground condition. It had been marked as ground under repair at the time because those areas get worn. So VJ took his nearest point of relief um, and measured his one club length with the driver. And drop the ball. Well, there are several circumstances in which the player would be required to redrop, you know, um, one of it, which would be if it rolled back into the condition from which you were taking relief, or if it rolled into a hazard or, excuse me, penalty area or a bunker or something like that. Um, and one of them is if the if the ball were to roll more than two club lengths. Well, in 2007, we didn't have this rule that said you must measure with a driver or mm-hmm. the longest club in your bag. So VJ dropped the ball, and when the ball came to rest, he he liked the lie. Well, he he'd measured for you know his nearest point of relief with the driver. Well, he automatically grabbed the sand wedge out of his bag at 35 inches long, and measured two club lengths. And it was you know I'm sorry he didn't like the lie. He wanted to drop it again and place it, and measured two club lengths, and it was greater than 70 inches. Now had he measured with his driver again. It would have been the ball would, have, ball would have been okay, and it would have been with him in play. But at that time, the rules just said you had to measure two club lengths, and it did not say what club you had to use to measure. So he used one club to measure the to determine nearest point of relief, point of relief and, and then he used another club, which was the shortest club in the bag, to say it rolled more than two club lengths. Now I get to place it, and all credit to VJ. He uh, knew the he rules. He knew the rule, and. Um, I, I, st- I stood there for a second, and I thought, boy, I never would have thought a tour player would get this right. It's one of those things, you know, and I, I don't want to diss tour players in any way, shape, or form, but obviously they're never going to show up at a, a USGA PGA Rules of Golf workshop and learn anything. I mean, they've got guys or gals all over the golf course that are going to help them with those rulings. I've always wondered why they didn't at least send their caddies to these schools. Sure. So just initially, hey, I know this. We're still going to call somebody in, but here's what I'm thinking. The one exception to that rule, and the one tour player I know that has passed the exam uh, is Annika Sornstam, and she did it as a player. Uh, She didn't do it after she retired. She actually went to the USGA PGA Rules workshops herself. I saw her at two or three, I think, maybe. Took the exam and actually, I believe, scored 85 or higher on the exam which would give you, you know, the ability to do rules at any USG event. PGA's was 92, I think. Yeah, that's that's a great example of, you know, him knowing the rules and measuring with the club that he knew would allow him to place the ball where he wanted to place it. And he would have a better lie, but it's... He still had a tough shot, but he hit a great shot and made par. Uh, it, was on, it was on 18 at Southern Hills. A lot of tree cover down the left side there. He was one of the first guys that really had a lot of distance mm-hmm. along with Tiger back when Tiger came out and kind of adopted the, the thought process that maybe Bryson DeChambeau has now. Of just bomb it down just, there and then I'll just wedge bomb it up. It. You know, I'd, I'd rather have a, a pitching wedge out of the rough than a six iron out of the middle of the fairway. And that's, I mean, because I can remember the proximity to the green where that crosswalk was. Um, was well beyond obviously where peop- where the committee had thought balls would come to rest, and, sure. and he actually hit it through the qu- crosswalk to the very edge of the crosswalk. Wow. So wow, and I think I've heard, um, I believe it was Payne Stewart say the reason I call in a rules official is because I want to make sure I get it right. There's a lot of money that we're playing for. If you've got a question on the rules of golf, Adam is here and he will answer it. Send us an email from the short grass at gmail.com. That will do it for this edition of From the Short Grass. I want to thank Arkansas linebacker Grant Morgan for spending some time on a day off and sitting down with us. Also, Kyle Parkinson for setting that up, the Outstanding Sports Information Director at the University of Arkansas. I'll leave you with this quote from Hank Aaron. It took me 17 years to get 3,000 hits in baseball. It took me one afternoon 
on the golf course. I hope you enjoy your next round on the course. And remember to always repair your ball marks and a couple of more. And I'll see you from the short grass. You've been listening to From the Short Grass, a weekly podcast dedicated to the game of golf. From the Short Grass is brought to you by minnowsplus.com and Blackman Auctions. This has been a presentation of the Buzz Radio Network.